Today I'm going to show you how to build a high-performance dual GPU system inside the compact new Carbide Series Air 240. To start, remove the four side panels by unscrewing each pair of thumb screws. Note that the thumb screws in the panels for the main compartment and rear power supply and drive compartment are loosely affixed to ensure they aren't lost. Squeeze the four tabs inside the front panel and gently remove it. Next, remove the thumb screw that secures access to the rear 3.5 inch drive cage. Tilt the cover up and out, then pull out the sled containing the box that holds the screw and accessory kit. For this build, we're going to be removing the stock AF120L fans that come with the Air 240 and replacing them with our green LED SP120 fans. Carefully unscrew the fan next to the I.O. cutout, then unscrew the two fans in the front of the case. Now we'll snap the motherboard's I.O. shield into place. This requires a modest application of force to each of the corners but it should eventually snap in securely on all four sides. With the I.O. shield installed, we can mount the motherboard to the tray. Note that we've already installed the CPU, memory, and backplate for the H100i. Gently slide the board in, lining up the I.O. with the shield and the mounting holes in the motherboard with the standoffs in the tray. Use the motherboard screws included with the Air 240 to mount the board in place. Given the dimensions of the Air 240, it's a good idea to connect as many cables as possible early on. Start by routing the USB 3.0 header through the closest grommet, then connect it to the motherboard. Next, route the HD audio header and front panel headers through the closest grommet. Connect the audio header to the motherboard. Note that you can also tuck the cable under the motherboard itself to clean things up a little. The front panel headers are always time consuming and can be frustrating. You'll have to check your motherboard's manual to determine exactly how to connect these headers. Just be careful and take your time. Next, we'll want to connect and route the modular cables for the auxiliary 12-volt power cable and the main 24-pin power cable. You can connect the 12-volt to the header on the motherboard and then route it in the channel alongside the board and through a grommet. We'll be installing a fan layer that should help cover this cable. The 24-pin power cable should then be connected and carefully routed through the motherboard tray you'll probably want to run it parallel to the USB 3.0 cable to make the most efficient use of internal space, but it should be kept clean to make space for the 240mm radiator we'll be installing in the front of the case. Connect however many SATA cables you need to to the motherboard headers. We just need one. Again, route the cable through the motherboard tray. Now is probably a good time to zip tie the 24-pin cable and USB 3.0 cable together to keep the build clean. With the exhaust fans already mounted to the back of the H100i, we can now go about installing it to the front of the case in a push-pull configuration. That means orienting the fan leads down so they can go through the grommets in the motherboard tray, shimmying the H100i into the front of the case, then sandwiching the two front fans between the case and radiator. Loosely install the long mounting screws with your fingers to ensure fitment, then once they're all in place, you can use a screwdriver to secure the fans and radiator. If you're reusing your H100i, apply a dot of thermal paste to the center of your CPU's heat spreader. Next, install the H100i's water block to the CPU, using thumb screws to secure each of the four corners into place. Since we're going to use the new Commander Mini to control fan speeds, connect a 4-pin Corsair Link cable to the block and route it through the same grommet that you routed the 12-volt power cable through. Plug the water block's fan header into the CPU fan header on your motherboard, and the water block's power cable through the grommet with the Corsair link cable. Next, we'll be mounting an exhaust fan to the interior of the case next to the CPU socket. Carefully slide it into the side of the case, then use four fan mounting screws to hold it in place. Like you did with the previous sets of cables, run the fan's power cable through the top grommet. We need to prepare for installing the graphics cards. Zip tie the necessary PCIe power cables together, then run them through the motherboard tray, giving some slack to either side. Now we need to install the two graphics cards. It's a tight fit, but can be done. Start by opening the toolless expansion slot clamp and removing the four slot covers. Next, slide the first graphics card into the case and snap it into the primary graphics card expansion slot. Take the second card and do the same. If you're running two NVIDIA cards, also be sure to connect the SLI bridge, then close the toolless clamp. If you have trouble closing the clamp, Check to make sure the tops of the card's mounting brackets are at proper 90 degree angles. If they're not, you can bend them with a pair of pliers. Connect the PCIe power leads to the graphics cards. Note that the shimmying back and forth may cause the toolless clamp to pop out. This isn't unusual, 
Just reclose the clamp when you're done. Be sure to try and tuck the cables away and out of the fan blades as best you can. Since we're not using the 3.5 inch drive sleds, we can remove that cage entirely. There's a single thumb screw that holds the cage into the case notches. Remove that screw and tilt the cage out of the case. To install an SSD, remove one of the 2.5 inch drive sleds from the top of the case. Snap the sled's pins into the sides of the SSD, then slide the sled back into the enclosure. Next, connect the SATA data cable that you routed earlier to the SSD. It's time to install the power supply. Gently tilt it into the rear chamber and line it up with the mounting holes in the back, then screw it into the chassis to secure it. While not strictly necessary, a little extra airflow never hurt anyone, so we're going to mount an intake fan to the rear chamber panel. Start by removing the magnetic dust filter. Next, carefully line up the mounting holes of the fan with the ones in the panel and screw it into place. Then replace the filter. We've already affixed the Commander Mini to the top of the power supply. Now it's just a matter of connecting everything. All of the fan headers can plug into the Commander Mini unit, including the one for the side fan, along with the Corsair link cable from the H100i's water block. You'll also want to connect the Corsair link cable from the HXI power supply to the Commander Mini, as well as connecting a SATA power lead to the SSD, Commander Mini, and H100i water block. Now we can close everything up. Make sure to either mush down or tie down the cables in the rear chamber so they don't obstruct the panel fan blades. Then just take your time and replace each of the side panels as well as the front panel, using the included thumb screws to resecure them. Finally, we'll want to apply the feet that were included with the case. Ordinarily, we have these affixed out of the factory, but the Air 240 can be oriented in a variety of ways. We're going to stick with the classic tower style orientation. Peel the backings off the feet and carefully affix them to each of the four corners of the case. And we're all set. If everything went well, your system should be ready to go. This is Dustin Scalabas with Corsair Labs. Thank you for watching.